So if you don't know, uh, apparently in 27, the on the road trip, Father's Weekend road trip in tw- January of 2017, uh, Mike Bab- Coach Mike Babcock asked Mitch Marner to rank his teammates' effort level uh, from that season in order of 1 through 20, ranging from the hardest working to the laziest. Now, this was, remember, this is Marner's rookie year. Rookie year. So Marner said, okay, like he did it. And apparently he had put himself at the bottom of the list. And there was essentially an agreement that, yes, uh, Marner needed to improve with his work ethic, which is the exact reason why this this uh, activity was done. This list was created. But what Babcock didn't say was that he was going to show the list or show tell the players at the bottom of the list that Marner ranked him at the bot- bottom of the list. And those players were Tyler Bozak and Nazem Kadri. Bozak now, his it, line mate. Bozak is line, line mate, yeah. So this is from Ian Tullock. Uh, according to multiple sources, Marner was in tears after the details of his list were shared, while his teammates were furious, specifically with Babcock. They couldn't believe their head coach would put a 19-year-old in that situation, especially considering how well-liked Marner was in the dressing room. So it it's a tough situation to put a 19-year 19 19-year-old 19 in. Uh, it's really there's a part of me that's surprised and there's a part of me that's not surprised really that this happened and i'll explain why you remember when mike there was a supposed trade uh from detroit mike green would be sent to toronto uh yes i do and i know and mike and mike green said no same with Valtteri Filpula. And same with Valtteri Filpula, who both and I know for a fact Mike Green played under Mike Green played under Mike Babcock. Yes. That says something. That says something. And he uh, Ian Tollett continues to say, I've spoken to numerous connected sources over the past few hours to break down exactly how Babcock has done similar things to other players he's coached in the past. And he cites uh, something from Detroit. Uh, he, Babcock asked a player questions about his teammates that were similar to the ones he asked Marner and then promptly shared the answers with the rest of the team. Jeff and and he's not the only one to find this type of stuff out. Jeff O'Neill came out and said uh, on Overdrive and basically said he talked to about five different players who played under Babcock, and this is the this is basically how it they he described them: hardworking coach, very dedicated to his craft, loves winning hockey games, loves hockey. At the end of the day, one of the worst human beings they've ever been around. Can I read you something that Carlo Kaliakovo said, apparently? Yeah, I think I know what you're going to say, but yeah. So on Babcock, he said every year in Detroit, the leaders would go in and try and get him fired, but Ken Holland wouldn't even entertain the conversation. Those are the same leaders you would assume are the likes of Henrik Zetterberg and Pavel Datsuk that once Babcock left, even admitted that it was time to move on. So it's clearly always been there, but nothing was done. Well, Jeff O'Neill went on to talk about the Mike Medano situation, which Mike Medano currently sits at 1,499 games played, thanks to Mike Babcock. And uh, healthy scratching Jason Spezza on opening night against Toronto in his hometown. And I didn't know this at the time, but apparently Jason, I personally did not know that Jason Spezza came two months early to Toronto to start working with the young guys. He then also scratched him against the Sens, who, of course, if for those of you who don't know. That was their opening. That was their opening game. Oh, was it there? I thought it was against. Oh, OK, so I'm stupid. Never mind. And of course, that is Jason Spezza's 
He played his best years. Of course, he was there when they went to the cup final. So, so now that I go back and look at Babcock saying he doesn't know the penalty kill or this and that and whatever excuses he came up with, it, it just seems like a load of crap. Also, of course, we always bring it up, but just just to put the nail in the coffin, of course, we all know Mike Modano, 499, never got game 1500 because of Mike Babcock. He was scratched 10 games. 10 games. Here's the thing. I don't put the blame, this situation, I don't put the blame on the players for not saying anything for three and a half years. How I, I think it's been about three and a half years. At the end of the day, they don't want to ruin their careers. You get, And I get Marner, because Marner's a superstar. If the, the He'll go anywhere and play. But there's certain, and this is as a whole, there's players who can't necessarily get a job anywhere. And if they speak out once, they're screwed. Because like we've talked about on this podcast before, there's the 200 hockey men. And word gets around to these 200 people quite fast. So you make one wrong move. You say one wrong thing. It's the same reason that it was. It's very similar to the reason we were talking about last week. Why the reporters weren't talking about this earlier. If they put out something like this, how fast do you think the Leafs say, bye, thank you for coming. We don't need you anymore. We're, we're, you don't you can't come and come to come here anymore. How fast do you think that happens? Uh, I would assume when Lou was there instantaneously and it would continue to happen today probably. You destroy your career if you're wrong. Or even if you were right, no one's going to admit to it when he's still there. Hockey players just don't do that. Right. And I think if we could take one specific thing from this situation is his style of coaching outside of hockey, managing the players outside of hockey does not work anymore. You want to instill fear in the players. It doesn't work. And I'm sick and tired of hearing or not hearing sick and tired of reading uh, specific. I've seen tweets like this claiming that players are becoming too soft that's a load of horse crap. It's society that's changed, and that's and people can't deal with that. Can I, I ask? Have, yeah. Can I ask you about one thing? Because I think a lot more of this we can talk about with uh, Bill Peters and that. Does your stance change about Mike Commodore now? Okay, I was gonna bring this up in a little bit. My stance on what he's trying to show. I I praise him for trying to put this out there that look at all this stuff that happens because we'll get to this in, later. This is stuff that needs to come out now. It needs to come out as soon as it happens. I don't – some there's some of the things that he's done I don't necessarily agree with. It's one thing to say I don't like Babcock because of this. It's one thing to say I don't like Babcock and then just dump on him. And then post a picture of him at his hotel or wherever he is. Right? There's two different – those are two different things. I agree with that we should ne – not necessarily that we need to know the stories, but necessarily that these stories are now coming out and teams are, teams are going to have to start doing stuff about this now. Do you think Mike Babcock works in the NHL ever again? I wouldn't be surprised if he works in the NHL again. Now, when we get to Bill Peters, that's a complete. I have a completely different answer. Because, really? Well, you you think Bill Peters is working in the NHL again? Oh no, but I I don't think Babcock is either. You know what the thing is? You can't look – this is why I broke it up. You can't look at the Mike Babcock situation and you can't look at the Bill Peters situation as one thing. 
they are completely separate instances. They are completely separate situations, very different. I okay, you're. I'd say you're half right. The racism is uh, inexcusable, but there was the story about how. And yeah, we're gonna talk more, but about Bill Peters like physically yes, hitting yes, his I, players. If that's physical abuse, what Mike Babcock has done with Marner in that, that is mental abuse. But the fact that Bill Peters went the ex is is not just physical abuse, and the fact that it's physical abuse and racism is ten ten times different than more than ten times different than what Mike Babcock did. I'm not saying Mike Babcock gets a job tomorrow, or I'm not saying Mike Mike Babcock might not get another NHL job for a couple years. I don't know, but I wouldn't be surprised to to see him behind an NA, NHL bench again at one point. But who's that dumb and is willing to risk that sort of PR disaster? I I, I don't know. I'm I don't know. <laughs> I don't have an answer for that question. But I'm I would not be surprised. <laughs> now, okay, I, there's other things that that I want to get to with this situation is as this is coming from a Leafs fan and, and it for the last five years or more since Brendan Shanahan was in charge and Lou Lamorello was hired. We've been told time and time again that the Leafs are being run as a tight ship. But then stuff like this happens. And I, I'm not entirely sure if, like, what this is. And I know Lamrello had had an incident. I don't, you know the incident, right, Adam? Which Lamorello one exactly? There's one I know of, but I don't know if he's The one, actually... yeah. The, the one that you, you texted me about. The cell phone thing. Yes, I yeah. did. Yeah, there's I just don't understand. It's like we were being the Lee fans have been were being misled for years and it kind of pisses me off. Are you sure you guys didn't just ignore it? Because the moment they lost the first series against Boston, they lost. We've never Adam, heard before of a coach. that. No, well, Adam, the, the that's point a, I'm we're talking is, three years, three I know, years Adam, before that. But Alex. People, I mean, like the moment Babcock flew to Arizona for the first time, there should have been some red flags when they okay. took a competitive that's team. Right, right. So that's after year three of Mike Babcock, correct? Or year yeah. two? That no, was after year, year two. Yeah. Year two. So for the first two years... We were being told this team is a tight ship. Management is being run tight, like whatever. You know what I'm talking about? This persona, this this personality that's been created. Yes. This is what we're being told, whether people believe it or not. This is what mm -hmm. we're being told. It's. I don't know what to what to get out of that. Is. Is it just Babcock, or is it the entire thing that's just BS? I because, mean... <laughs> because we know that Lamorello knows about it. I'm pretty sure we know. I, I'm pretty sure we know Shanahan knows about it, but no one did anything about it. And I want to know what the conversation was in that room because I know they asked Shanahan about it, and Shanahan said, uh, "It's the past. We would have dealt with." with Thinking on it now, we should have dealt with it differently. Something along the lines of that. Maybe it's normal but, to Shanahan. Because he played for Babcock for even when I think it was a season. Shanahan's one of the greatest players of all time. He played in that gritty era. I mean, Shanahan as a player was a dick. Uh, so he probably thinks it's normal. And then Lula Morello is basically a, a, a mob boss of a GM. He saw it as normal. He must have. Do you? Okay. Now that you now that the Leafs have a different let's just go with a different generation in charge and Kyle Dubas and Sheldon Keefe as the coach and a whole new hockey generation. Do you think that 
changes Brendan Shanahan's perspective? Or you think Brendan Shanahan is a type of guy who's stubborn? I think Brandon Shanahan likes the position he's in and the paycheck he's getting, and I think he's going to go along with it. Go along, com- with, go along with what Kyle Dubas is doing. Yes, because that's the way the organization, the organization is gone. Okay. I doubt he felt in charge with Lou. He may have been Lou's boss, but you're tell- but he, he, let's be honest, he wasn't. Lou right. is his boss. I mean, what I mean is Lou is his own boss. Right. So... This is the last point I want to get to on the Babcock situation, and then I'd like to get on the Bill Peter situation. Yeah. So when Mike ba- – I don't know if you remember this, but I remember it quite clearly. When Mike Babcock first joined the Toronto Maple Leafs, number one during his press conference, and number two, he was uh, – I remember listening to this on primetime sports. He said – he wanted to make Toronto a safe place to play for the young guys, and he wanted to bring people from Ontario to come play for the Leafs because no one wanted to. No one wanted to. No one from Ontario wanted to come play in Toronto because it was a nightmare. So explain to me. I get he apologized. I get Mike Babcock apologized. I don't know what that means I, I because it still seems like everyone no one on this team really liked him. What does doing something like this do? What goes through his mind that says this is the right thing to do? To share it. I, I don't know if I necessarily have a problem with him ma- even making a list. I have a major problem with him showing the players. Maybe he's he's out. It's, so it's clear he's done this before. There's a new generation of players in the league Maybe he's just out of touch. Maybe it's the psychology degree people love saying he's talking about, and he thinks he's trying to play with players, and he reali- and he didn't realize that it just it doesn't work anymore, Alex. L- like I said before, his style of coaching and managing players just does not work anymore. No. Does not work. Now, from this, do you remember in the summer, uh, one Mr. Mitch Marner claimed he felt disrespected by the organization when he wasn't offered performance bonuses. Oh, oh yeah. Oh. What are the chances? That's a whole load of BS. Well, I, what are I the mean, chances? A good part of that's Darren Ferris, right? And it's not like you can't go and bash the coach when at the time it felt like the coach was the most protected player in the league. But I think there was definitely more to it. And you can't tell me the negotiation doesn't go easier if Mike Babcock's, you know. But here's the thing with this with this negotiation, that something we didn't see a lot from other negotiations. Marner came out and said he wanted to play in Toronto. I don't remember that happening with any other Darren Ferris organized uh, uh, negotiation. Because at his core, Mitch Marner is a Leafs fan. Mitch, he's, Mar- yeah. He, he is very, if you really think about it, I don't remember the last time I saw a player that quite wanted to play in the market. I think the only players I can think of were PK and Mitch. And Mitch is actually getting the chance to stay there. Right. So that's why I'm saying I think whether or not it had the biggest effect on the negotiation, I definitely think it had an effect. because And if that's the case... I can't blame Dubis for that negotiation at all because he – remember, there were rumors that he wanted to fire Babcock in April, but he was told he wasn't. We all thought it, we, we all thought it was going to happen. I, I, I thought it was going to happen. I thought Babcock coached his last game in Toronto. Since Xero thought it was going to happen. Except he had like 23 more games he was allowed to coach. <laughs> So if Mike Bat and I know we don't I don't like playing the what if the what if game but what if Mike Babcock was fired does that I'm not saying the negotiation isn't going to be uh messy it's still Darren Ferris it's still at the end of the day it's still Darren Ferris but the fact is Mitch Marner was a Maple Leaf Mitch Marner wanted to be a Maple Leaf publicly he said he wanted to be a Maple Leaf 
does that negotiation go a bit differently? Because at the end of the day, yes, Darren Ferris is his agent, but who's making the decisions? It's all Mitchie. It's Mitch Marner. And it also doesn't help that this situation happened on the father's trip. And uh, yeah. we all know Paul Marner, right? We've all seen that, uh, what was it, the CP24 or na- the national the, clip? The CBC, yeah. yeah. CBC, all, sorry. And we all know what he said, all the things he said. He said. Yeah, on the, the athletic you're te- article, yeah. You're telling me that this negotiation isn't just a little bit easier if Mike Babcock isn't coach? <laughs> 